Okay, let's start off with the first um, caricature boss, which is the uh, boss who is never satisfied. Uh, this is the type of boss, and remember I'm caricaturing here, this type of boss that no matter what you do, no matter how much work and effort you put into something, they're never happy. They're never satisfied with whatever you've done. These are bosses who want things done to the idea they have in their head. They have kind of an idea in their head, but it's not what they expressed in their instructions. That's why they're never satisfied because the thing that's done for them is never the same as what they have in their head, the idea in their head. So how they work is usually it goes like this. They tell you what they want you to do or to produce. You ask some questions, then you work on whatever it is that they've asked you to do and you give it to them or you send it to them. And well, you can tell they're not happy or they say outright they're not happy. Um, they say that it's not what they want or that's not what they meant and they criticize some aspect of it. And then they have a tendency to do this with everything, and usually everyone. There could be several reasons for this behavior. Yeah? Uh, pff, we're not gonna analyze the, 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 the reasons for all of this, but I go back to the, the thing about, it, the thing they have in their head, which is normally just like an idea, hasn't been fully developed in their head. No, they haven't thought it through uh, enough. And this happens a lot with busy people yeah, uh, in higher positions who have to think about a lot of things. So they don't think enough about a lot of them. So when you've given them what you have understood, of course, it doesn't match what's in, what's in their head. But how could you possibly be inside their head? Then sometimes as well, another reason is by the time that they're kind of as telling you or asking you to do whatever the work they want you to do and by the time you've produced or finished the work their idea or their thinking has changed or evolved and they haven't told you <laughs> and now they want something added something taken away or something completely different sometimes or they're never satisfied because nothing is as good as they would do it themselves that's a lot of people, right? It's, it's because it's not the way they would have done it in their head again, then it's not, they're not happy with it. And then they, rather than understand that about themselves, they, they put the, um, the blame, the criticism or the fault on, on, on the person, you in this case, thinking, okay, well, you didn't do what I asked you. Bosses who find more faults than strengths or who see what's missing rather than what is there are very complicated to work for. It's, it's like getting always like critical feedback or seeing that they're not happy kind of burns your soul and, and, and it demotivates you. And when it happens all the time, you can, it can really affect your self-confidence and your self-esteem. And you can even start to, to doubt your own abilities, right? Because you're thinking, okay, everything I do, they're not happy. It must be me. So if you're working for a boss like this and there's no positive feedback coming from your boss that, that compensates this constant, mm, it's not just right, or mm, I would have done it this way, or I don't like that, um, then you can really like start to feel bad. And, and, and that can be um, even more devastating if the person giving the critical feedback about whatever you've done and picking at the faults does it in a say let's say authoritarian tactless or insensitive way okay so you can have a boss that's never happy but they're kind of nice about the way they tell you and you can have a boss who's never happy who's not at all nice with, about the way they tell you that they're not happy and this can really really cause a lot of frustration in people and cause a lot of stress and burnout because it's hard if you, it, it's hard to know what to do right because everything you do, there's something wrong with it. So what can you do? If you have a boss like this, even though it's hard, the first thing you have to understand and interiorize is that it's not you that has the problem, it's them. The job and responsibility of a manager is to be clear enough, crystal clear in their explanation of what it is they want to get what they want. So it's important to learn as I said, like this standing outside and observing them, 
when your boss is giving you work, what level of maturity they have given, meaning what, what level of thought, depth and, and, and reflection they have put into what they're asking you to do, right? So sometimes busy people have a lot of ideas, but they don't take the time to develop and reflect them, as I've already said. So when they ask the person to do something, it's more of an idea than something that's being thought about and ends up being very vague. But for them, in their head, it's very clear. So then if they don't communicate much more than the idea, of course, it's difficult to um, do it. So you really have to observe, okay, uh, and you do this by asking questions, how much have they really thought about what they're asking me to do? And the more questions you ask at the moment of being asked what to do, the more um, you will see and the more you will force them to think. The more you learn to observe your boss and your different bosses along the way, you will detect that in this case, for example, with the never happy boss, if it's a spontaneous idea that they haven't given much thought to, or if they have. The way to minimize the impact of their critical feedback when they are criticizing what you've done because it's not what they think they've asked you to do is to ask a lot of questions. And there are three key questions that a person once told me that I, uh, that I thought were very useful is you ask the person, who is this for? What is this for and why? And how do you want the end result or deliverable to be? I.e., you're asking them, who is this for? Why? What is it for and why? And, and, and what is exactly are you expecting? So you're, you're asking all these questions. Yeah, and more if you can think of them, because the more questions you ask, the more information you will have from the person.
then the key is to repeat what you've understood from the instructions your boss is giving you back to your boss. This is called reformulation. And this is to make sure you have understood and it also puts the responsibility back onto your boss to check and modify where you are saying something that they haven't, that that's not what they meant. This is very effective. Yeah? So you just say something like, let me just repeat that back to you to make sure I've understood properly and you repeat it back and then they hear it and they can, that, that, that is very effective. So, so that's the first step when they're giving you the, the, the initial instruction or objective. Then the next important step is to check in with them very often as you progress with the work. Okay, so you're having more check-in points with these types of bosses than you would normally. This is very important. This forces them to look at the work and reevaluate their own ideas if they haven't been very mature and rectify anything before you have gone and spent a lot of time and effort doing the whole thing. That saves you time and believe me, it saves you misery because if you give them the work after just a little bit is done, hey, I just wanted to check in, make sure I'm on the right track. And if they're signing off each time going, yeah, yeah, that's right. By the time you come to the end, they will look really stupid if they say, no, that's not what we want when you've been checking in with them all along the way. Do not expect these types of bosses who are highly critical bosses, always finding negative things, to be good at giving clarity. Yeah, they're not good at that. So you need to get the clarity from them. Yeah? And, and as I said, checking in very, very frequently with your deliverable, with your progress, making, keep asking questions, uh, about the next stage. Yeah? Don't just go away, do it all and come back. I've done that a lot of times and then spend a lot of work doing something to bring a 30 page document and someone goes, no, not my boss goes, that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. And you're going, you have to go back and do it again. When the person is very critical and tactless, your best bet is to tell them how that makes you feel and ask them to speak to you in a more tactful way. This can be difficult if you're not used to being open about how you feel or you're nervous about the repercussions, but this is assertivity training and it is essential for dealing with difficult bosses and difficult team members and difficult people that you also will have to manage throughout your career. So even though you might feel anxious about saying to your boss, hey look, if you don't like my work or you find something um, that's not right with it, I don't mind you telling me, but please, if you could do it in a, in, in a, in a quieter way or whatever words you choose to say it. Despite the anxiety, you will feel stronger for having said it. And even if nothing changes, just keep saying it every now and again. And remember, and not just remember, but believe that the problem isn't yours. The problem is with that person. Yeah, particularly if it's clear that they're not explaining the thing properly or they haven't really thought about what they're asking. So your job with these people is to help them to think, help them to get to that better level of maturity of the idea so that you don't go away and work on something that's so flimsy, nobody could get it right. It is their job, I repeat, the job of a manager is, and I repeat it always, to be clear, set clear priorities, explain exactly what they want in terms of deliverables, and to motivate and support you. Okay? But this only happens with managers who understand that, and who understand that they have to be evolving as well. But you will meet many managers along your career who do not understand this and just do the same thing in the same style all the time.